Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number six from a exercise, exercise 5B from the Mechanics 1M1 textbook from the International A-Level Pearson at Excel. Um, this is the textbook from this um, publisher. It's from chapter five, Forces of Friction, um, exercise 5B, question six. It's a quite a simple question. One of the students um, that I teach asked me to answer this question for him, so I'm going to go through it. It says, a force of 30 newtons acts horizontally on a particle of mass 5 kilograms that rests on a smooth slope that is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal, as shown in the diagram. Find the acceleration of the particle. Okay, so I'm going to just um, take a copy of this diagram. Now, what I like to do when I have a, a question like this is I like to redraw this the forces like this in um, like so that they act like this in this direction here. So I like to show I, I like to show the force acting so that it's you know acting in this in, in this direction or rather than going towards the plane, going away from the plane, it still be the same thing. So I'm going to get rid of this over here. Get rid of this over there and just redraw, re redraw it that way. I find it easier to um, think in terms of resolving the forces because we have to resolve the forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so that's what I like to do. So this is 30 newtons acting horizontally on the particle of mass 5 kilograms. Okay, what are the forces acting on this particular particle? Well, you have its weight acting straight down, which is um, 5g newtons and you also have the reaction force which is acting perpendicular to the plane which is r newtons all right now when something is in this uh, um, kind of situation here where it's on a plane okay it's either going to be moving up or down the plane it's going to be moving parallel to the plane so what we need to do is resolve the forces that are acting on it parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Always parallel and perpendicular to the direction of motion. Okay, so this particle here, if we think about the forces acting on it, I'm going to just um, make a little line like this. Okay, first of all, I know that this angle here is the same as this angle here. This is 30 degrees just as this is 30 degrees, okay? And the reason being, a lot of students ask the reason why, why is this 30 degrees? Because we have a pair of similar triangles. This big triangle here, okay, is a right angle triangle with an angle of 30 degrees and a 90 degrees angle over here, okay? And this triangle is also a, um, an angle, a uh, triangle, sorry, with an uh, angle of 90 degrees. Now, this angle is the same in both this big triangle and this little triangle. This angle here is common to this little triangle as well as it is to the big triangle. So this big triangle has an angle of 90 and this angle here. And the small triangle also has an angle of 90 and this same angle there. So that means the third angle in both of them must be the same. So these two angles must be 30 degrees from similarity. So even if you didn't understand that, it's not a big deal, you can still realize you should know that this is 30 degrees. Okay, so if I resolve the, the weight in the direction of, um, you know, perpendicular to the plane, so this, I'm going to resolve this weight in this direction. I'm also going to resolve it parallel to the plane, which will have a component going down. And I'm also going to resolve the 30 newtons horizontal force. I'm going to resolve it parallel to the plane and also perpendicular to the plane. So it's going, to have a, it's going to have a component in this direction as well. Okay, so I know that this angle here is 30 degrees as well because of the fact that these are corresponding angles, parallel lines. Okay, so therefore um, I can now resolve these forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So if I'm going to resolve the 5G Newtons parallel, uh, perpendicular to the plane, when I resolve it, I have to go into the angle. It's like I'm finding the adjacent side. So whenever you're going into the angle, you use cosine. So this is 5g times cosine 30. Okay, and whenever I have to go away from the angle, it's like I'm finding the opposite side, you could say. Away from the angle given, 
that's going to be using sine. So this is going to be 5G sine 30. And similarly, 30 newtons, if I, re if I resolve it parallel to the plane, I've got to go into the angle. It's like I'm finding the adjacent side again. So that's going to be 30 um, times sine, sorry, into the angle cosine. Okay, 30 times cosine 30. And if I'm going to resolve away from the angle here, this way, perpendicular, that's going to be 30 times away from the angle is sine 30 degrees. Okay, so there we have all the forces resolved parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Okay, now we want to find the acceleration of the particle. Okay, so we know that the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. This is a smooth plane. Okay, smooth slope. Okay, that means there's no friction. So these are the only forces acting parallel to the plane. Okay, so don't, I don't really have to worry about this force acting perpendicular. That will be really when I'm dealing with friction. There's no friction going to be here. So let's look at the resultant force. Let's just take, assume it's going to be going upwards. So I'll take up the slope as positive. Okay, um, if it turns out to be negative, then the acceleration will be down the plane. Okay, so let's have a look. You've got 30. The, you know that the... The force is equal to the mass times acceleration, the resultant force. So the resultant force would be 30 times cosine 30, okay, minus 5g, because this is going down, this is going up, minus 5g times sine 30 is equal to the mass of the particle, which is 5 times acceleration. So this is time 30 times, the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, minus, and the sine of 30 is a half, so that's going to be... Um, 2.5 times g equals 5a. So we can say the acceleration is going to be um, 15 root 3 minus 2.5g divided by 5. Okay, so the acceleration, let's work it out now using the calculator. It's going to be 15 root 3, 15 times root 3, minus 2.5 times g, which is 9.8. All of that divided by 5. And that gives us 0 0.296, 0 0.296 meters per second squared. Okay, so the acceleration is up the plane. And this is the value 0 0.296 to 3SF. We can write it as 0 0.30 if you want to, 0 0.30. Okay, because that's going to become uh, 0 0.3 if you round it to 2SF. Both of those are acceptable. Because we're using G, we can round it to 2SF or 3SF. Both are acceptable. Okay, this is by rights the more, you know, kind of accurate way of writing it because we used G as 9.8. Okay, we're asked to use G as 9.8, which is two significant figures. So our answer really should be two significant figures. But in the exam, they accept 3SF. So that's probably the safest thing to do because that's acceptable whether you use G or not. Okay, so that's probably more safe in an exam to do, but this is probably the more accurate way to write it because we've used G already to 2SF, so the answer, you know, cannot really be more accurate than that. So there we have the answer to this question number six. I hope that was clear. All right, how to resolve the forces in the direction of the motion and perpendicular to the direction. In, in this case, we didn't need to know the forces perpendicular to them, the, the direction, but we should always do it because if there is friction, if friction does, uh, if there is a rough plane, then we would need to work out the friction for which we need to know the reaction force because the friction um, F max is equal to mu times R. Okay, so we have to know R in, when we have questions dealing with friction. That's why it's always good to resolve parallel and perpendicular to the plane always, okay, to the direction of motion. Okay, so... That's question number six from this book. Pretty simple question, but um, covering some basic um, um, kind of skills that we need in this um, topic or in this in this um, topic of um, you know resolving forces, okay, and inclined planes. All right. So other questions that you might want to watch from this chapter of the book, uh, when I'm asked to answer them, I will collect them together in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions from the, you know, this topic of um, forces and friction. Um, well, this is basically inclined planes and stuff you can find in this um, playlist that should appear in this area over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.